I want to be a lady in a flower shop. Instead of selling at the corner of Tottenham Court Road. They won't take me unless I can talk more genteel. He said he could teach me. Where I am, ready to pay him. You see, we live in an age of upstarts. Men begin in Kentish Town on 90 pounds a year and finish in Park Lane on 100,000. They want to lose the Kentish Town, but they give themselves away every time they open their mouths. Now that's where I can teach- own business and leave it for you alone! Why? Cease this detestable boo-hooing or seek the shelter of some other place of worship. I'm interested. What about the ambassador's garden party? I'll say you're the greatest teacher alive if you make that good. I'll bet you all the expenses of the experiment you can't do it. And I'll pay for the lesson. Oh, you are real good, Frankie Cullen. Do you know, it's almost irresistible. She's so deliciously low, so horribly dirty. Ow, I do! Wash me face now, you poor comrade. You're certainly not going to turn her head with flattery. If you are wicked and idle, you shall sleep in the back kitchen with the black beetles and be walked by Mrs. Pierce with a broomstick. At the end of six months, you will be taken by carriage to Buckingham Palace, beautifully dressed. If the king finds out that you are not a lady, you will be taken by the police to the Tower of London, where your head will be cut off as a warning to other presumptuous flower girls. If you are not found out, you will have a present of seven and sixpence to start life with as a lady in a shop. If you refuse this offer, you will be a most wicked and ungrateful girl, and the angels will weep for you. There, could I put it more plainly, Colonel Pickering? Could I be more fair, Mrs. Pierce? They just think, think what that means to a man. It means he's always up against middle class morality. If ever there's anything going on, I'll put in for a bit of it, it's always the same. You can't have it! You're undeserving! Well, my needs is as great as the most deserving winner who has ever got money out of six charities in the same week for the death of one husband! I don't need less than the deserving, I need more! I don't eat less than I live, and I drink quite a lot more. I want entertainment because I'm a thinking man. I want cheerfulness and a song when I feel low. <laughs> or they charge me just the same as they charge us the deserving. I mean, what is middle class morality, eh? It's just an excuse for them giving me anything. So I'm asking you, as two gentlemen, not play that game with me. Eh? I've been straight with you. I am pretending to be deserving, I'm undeserving. I mean, go on being undeserving, I like it, and that's the truth. Now, will you take advantage of a man's nature to do it out of the price of his own daughter, what he's brought up and fed and raised by the sweat of his own brow until she's grown big enough to be of interest to you two gentlemen? I mean, it's five pounds of reason, look. I'll put it to you, and I'll leave it with you. <coughs> No, you see, the fact is, I've picked up a girl. Does that mean that some girl has picked you up? No, not at all. I don't mean a love affair. What a pity. Why? Well, you never fall in love with anyone under 45. When will you discover that there are some rather nice-looking young women about? No, I can't be bothered with young women. No, my idea of a really lovable woman is, well, something as like you as possible. I shall never really get in the way of liking young women. Oh, here she is, Mother. How do you do, Mrs. Higgins? Mr. Higgins told me I might come. Quite right. I'm very glad indeed to see you. Where does this girl live? Well, with us, of course. Where else would she live? But on what terms is she a servant? If not, what is she? Oh, I think I know what you mean, Mrs. Higgins. Oh, dash me if I do. I've had to work for months at the girl to get her to a present pitch. Besides, she's useful. She remembers where my things are and knows what appointments I've got and so on. What's the matter? Anything wrong? <laughs> no, nothing wrong with you. I won your bet for you, haven't I? I don't matter, I suppose. You won my bet. You! 
Presumptuous insects, I won it. What did you throw those slippers at me for? Because I want to smash your face. I could kill you, you selfish brute. Why don't you leave me where you picked me up out of in the gutter? You thank God it's all over and you can throw me back again then, do you? Oh, so the creature is nervous after all. Ah! Oh, no, would you? Claws in, you cat. Sit down. How dare you show your temper to me? What's to become of me? What's to become of me? How the devil do I know what's to become of you? What does it matter? What becomes of you? you? What is it? Eliza's bolted. You must have frightened her. Frightened her? Nonsense. As she was left last night, as usual, to lock up and put out the lights, and instead of doing that, her bed wasn't slept in. She went right off. She came at seven this morning in a taxi for her things, and that damn fool Mrs. Pierce gave them to her without asking me a thing about it. Well, what am I to do? Do without, I'm afraid, Henry. The girl has a perfect right to leave if she chooses. The question is not whether I've treated you rudely, but whether you've ever heard me treat anyone else better. I don't care how you treat me. I don't mind your swearing at me. I wouldn't mind a black eye. I've had one before this, but I won't be passed over. Well, then get out of my way, because I won't stop for you. I want to be a lady in a flower shop. Still of sale at the corner of Tottenham Court Road. They won't take me unless I can talk more genteel. He said he could teach me. Where I am, ready to pay him. <laughs>